A Java thread is like a virtual CPU that can execute code inside of your Java application. If you look at this example here, you can see that it consists of a class with a main method. And the main method here is actually executed by a thread when the Java virtual machine starts up the application. Inside of the main method, we create a new thread and then we call thread start. This will start this thread running in parallel with the main thread. So now we have two threads running at the same time time but this thread is not actually doing anything so it will just start and stop immediately uh, i will show you in later examples how to actually execute some code inside of this thread there are actually four different ways to specify what code a thread should run and the first way is to create a class which extends the thread class and then overwrite the run method and i will show you a little bit later how this example is actually working or that it is actually working. Um, the second way is to create a class that implements the runnable interfa interface and then pass an instance of this runnable to the constructor of the thread. And then when the thread is started, it will execute the run method of that runnable implementation. The third way is to create an anonymous implementation of the runnable interface, which is similar to creating a class that implements the runnable interface. And the fourth way is to create a Java Lambda expression, which also implements the runnable interface. And I will show you all four of these methods in this video. The first way is to create a subclass of the thread class and overwrite the run method. And that is what I have done here. Now, when I create the thread here in the main method, I now have to create an instance of this class, which I defined up here and call start on that. And when um, this thread is started, it will then execute the run method. And I will just run it here so that you can see that it is actually working. However, this is, as you can see, um, the run method is executed. It prints my thread running and my thread finished. Now, even though this is working, um, this is not considered as nice as implementing the runnable interface instead. So I have just shown you that it is possible, but I would recommend that you use one of the runnable interface implementation methods in your own applications. The second way is to implement the runnable interface. And in this example here, I have created a class called my runnable, which implements the runnable interface. And from the runnable interface, you must implement the run method. And that uh, method here will get executed when the thread is running. And now you can see down here in the main method, I create a new thread, which is a normal Java thread this time. And then I pass a new runnable, an, an instance of this uh, class that I created up here to the thread. And then I call start. And when this method here, or when this thread is started, it will execute the runnable method. And you can see it does exactly the same thing. Uh, it prints my runnable running and my runnable finish, just like this uh, run method has said it should do. The third method is to implement the uh, runnable interface as an anonymous class. Um, and that I have shown you an example of here. As you can see here, we create a new runnable uh, implementation here and we specify an implementation of the run method here, which is doing the same thing. It's just prints runnable running and runnable finished. And then we create a new runnable, uh, a new thread here with the runnable as a parameter to the constructor of the thread. And then we start it. And now we can see that it does pretty much the same thing. It starts up and then runnable running and runnable finished is printed out. The fourth way to specify what code a thread should run is to implement the runnable interface with a Java Lambda expression. And that is what I have shown you here. As you can see, I still type the variable as a runnable. And then here I have specified the body of a Lambda expression. And um, oh, actually it's a full Lambda expression. And in here, this body here is what will be executed when the run method of the runnable here is is called 
And I will not get into more detail about Java Lambda expressions, but if you check out the description below the video, then I will have a link to my uh, Java Lambda expression tutorials, which explains those uh, in more detail. However, once the runnable uh, Lambda expression is created, we can use it just like any other runnable. We pass it as a parameter to the uh, thread constructor, and then we call thread start. And this will actually, as you can see, do the same thing. Print Lambda running, Lambda finish, and that's it. It is possible for a runnable to obtain a reference to the thread that is currently executing the runnable using the thread.currentThread method. Okay, so from this method here, we get a thread, a reference back to a thread, and that is the thread that is currently executing this runnable here. Actually, you could do the same thing out here in the main method, and you would get a reference to the thread that was executing the main method. And once you have a reference to a thread, you can also get the name of the thread out. And that is just a, a string here. And then you can see here, we print the name out and we print that it is running. We can also specify the name of a thread when we create it. And you can see how that looks down here. We create a new thread. I pass the runnable as parameter to the constructor. And then I pass the name of the thread. And now we will run this example and you will see that you can see the thread running. And that is the name here, the thread that gets printed out here and then running, which gets printed out here. Now, let me just show you what happens if you start up more than one thread. All right, let's just duplicate this code here. We call it thread two. We have to remember to start thread two and we call this thread two and this one the thread one. Now let's run this code and you will see that two threads are started and you can even see that thread two is executing before thread one, right? So you, you're not guaranteed exactly in which order these two threads execute their code. And that is because you have no guarantees about exactly in which order the CPUs and the operating system underneath are switching between these two runnables and executing them. You can get a thread to sleep by calling the thread.sleep method. And I have an example here. Um, as you can see, again, we create a runnable as a, a Lambda expression here. And then you can see in here, I call the static method sleep. And this is the, you know, the parameter passed uh, to sleep is the number of milliseconds the thread should sleep which basically means being be inactive before it continues running. And now you can see here, there will be a few seconds between it calls running and before it calls finished. And that was also what we expected, right? When we look up here, it first prints running, then it sleeps for two seconds and then it prints finished. Now let's have a look at how to stop a thread. The Java thread has class has a method called stop, which you should never call. It is deprecated. If you call this method, your thread will stop, but it, it you don't know where in the code that your thread has stopped. So it leaves your application in an undefined state. Instead, it is better to manage the stopping yourself. If you look at this example here, I have created a class called stoppable runnable, which implements the runnable interface. This class has a single, um, field, which is called stop requested. It has a single method here called request stop, which will flip the flag here from false to true. Then it has a method here called is stop requested, and that will return the value of the flag. Notice that these two methods are, are declared synchronized. And that basically means that only one thread can call uh, request stop or is stop requested at the same time um, within the same stoppable runnable interfaces. If two threads are calling uh, request stop and is stop requested on different stoppable runnable implement uh, in instances, that is perfectly possible. And I will not get into more detail about the Java synchronized keyword in this video. Instead, I will refer you to the description below the video for links to uh, a textual tutorial about that keyword. Also later videos in this um, playlist about Java concurrency and threads will um, have more information about the synchronized keyword. Now let's have a look at this method here. It's just a standard a method that calls sleep. And then we have the run method here. 
right? This is the run method of the stoppable runnable uh, implementation here. It starts by printing out that the stoppable runnable is running, and then as long as is stop requested has not been called yet, um, it sleeps for one second, and then it just prints these three dots out. And at some point, when another thread calls this request stop and flips the flag to true, then this is stop requested will return true. And this uh, condition here will return false. The while loop will stop and the thread here will also stop and it will first print this stoppable runnable stop and then it stops. Now, down here in the main method, you can see that we create, uh, create a new stoppable runnable. We pass it as parameter to the constructor here along with a name for the thread. We start the thread, sleep for five seconds here. That is the main thread that sleeps here for five seconds, not this thread, remember that. And after that, it prints that now it will request the uh, stoppable runnable to, to stop. It calls request stop on the runnable, not on the thread, on the runnable. And then it prints out that it has requested the stop. Now let's run this example and see what we get in the console. As you can see, first it starts running. It prints, prints, prints that it these dots that is running. We request stop, stop requested. It just prints one more round of dots and then the stoppable runnable has stopped as we expected it to do. So that is how you can implement um, a runnable that can be stopped. The Java virtual machine will stay alive as long as there are any remaining threads that are running. So even if the main thread uh, terminates, if there is another thread running, the Java virtual machine will keep running. And you can see in this example here that I am creating a thread which keeps running forever because this while loop here keeps running forever. And then I simply create a thread, pass the runnable to it, start it, and then I wait for three seconds. And then the main thread terminates, right? But look what happens when we run this example. As you can see, even after the main thread has terminated, um, this thread keeps running and keeps the Java virtual machine alive. If you do not want a thread to keep the Java virtual machine alive, um, if it is the only thread running, then you have to mark it as a daemon thread. And you do that by calling set daemon true. That's all it takes. Now you will see that the um, behavior is different. The thread here will run as long as the main thread is also running. See, it runs one, two, or three times, then the main thread uh, stops, and that terminates the whole Java virtual machine, and that thus also terminates all daemon threads that are running. Just keep in mind that these daemon threads are stopped in an undefined state, so uh, you should make sure that these daemon threads are resting in a um, state or in a path in the code where they are not in the middle of executing some important code, which is then only half finished, because that might lead to some undesirable side effects in your application. It is also possible for um, one thread to wait for another thread to terminate. If you look at this example here, we have created a simple runnable. It, exec it executes uh, this for loop. It iterates through the loop uh, five times. In each iteration, it sleeps one second and prints out that it is running. Then we create a thread. We set daemon to true, and then we call start. Now, now the uh, main thread will terminate immediately, and that means that this thread here will also terminate immediately. So it will not actually get a chance to execute this loop. Have a look at this, because it is a daemon thread, right? Have a look at this. See, it just terminates immediately. Now, we can get the main thread to wait for this other thread simply by having the main thread called thread.join on the other thread. Now the main thread will block until this thread terminates, and that is until the run method up here in this runnable has exited. Now let's run this again and see what happens. Now you can see that we get five iterations through the loop. Then this thread terminates. And along with that, you can see the main thread now uh, also terminates. And that's because once this thread up here terminates, this thread join method call returns. 
and the main thread continues here and then there's no more code to run so the main thread exits and the java virtual machine shuts down one final thing that i would like to mention is that uh, threads in java are managed by the underlying operating system that the java virtual machine is running on and such threads are often referred to as os level threads os level threads are often more heavy than what is uh, sometimes unnecessary. Um, for instance, it might uh, require one to two megabytes of stack space uh, for each thread allocated. So in case you allocate or create a thousand threads, you also allocate uh, a thousand times one to two megabytes of stack space. Right? That gets really heavy if you have an application where you need to start a lot of threads. Then you use a lot of memory just for the threads themselves. And because of that, Java has a project called Project Loom. And Project Loom is intending to create some more lightweight threads. And typically, these are threads that are managed not by the operating system, but by the application itself, which means by the Java virtual machine itself. And these lightweight threads will maybe be called green threads, or maybe they will be called fibers. Um, at the time I recorded this video, Project Loom is not yet finished. And uh, we are at Java 14 at the moment. Um, so we will probably get um, Project Loom in a future um, version of Java. But this is something to, to keep in mind, to be on the lookout for. This might actually change how we work with threads in Java in the future. That's it for this video about Java threads. Remember to check out the description below the video for links to the other tutorials that I have mentioned in this uh, video, as well as a link to the whole playlist about uh, Java concurrency and multi-threading that I have. Um, if you like the video, hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos about Java and web development and similar topics, hit the subscribe button as well.